So um, initially, my slides were all about AI. And I think Steve probably did a pretty good job um, covering it. And I thought I might change it a bit and, and, and talk about blockchain today. But before I do, um, I just want to briefly talk about the maturity, how we see it as Deloitte um, of AI in the industry before I, I get into blockchain. And, and why did we actually come up with this concept? Um, so, so my role at Deloitte uh, <coughs> as both a principal and a scientist is to lead this entire AI revolution for the firm. And I'm also an adjunct at uh, UTS in the Department of Engineering. So uh, I do, uh, you know, apply deep learning and machine learning quite a bit. At least I try to actually these days. But it's, uh, it's quite an interesting topic, AI, because <coughs> When you look at the adoption of it, we've got a very low adoption in our industry. It's starting to get a lot of traction today and it's starting to become very prominent. And, and I think the important factor is, um, you know, AI is going to permeate literally all of our business processes and going to make a significant impact. And it's how do we apply it? Um, is how the businesses will benefit. And, and just the other night I was presenting in, Bris in Brisbane actually on, on AI and the future of work and this gentleman came up to me and said, uh, you know what, I've applied AI to our business. So he spoke about nonlinear regression and classification and all the nice technologies and I said, that's brilliant. And he says, do you know AI did not take away any jobs in my firm. I managed to increase the profit from 20 million to 35 million, to 55 million, and we've doubled our workforce. And I said, that's amazing, that's brilliant. So I just want to let everyone know that even at ComBank, when I was there, and we grew our data science team from three to 400 people when I left, uh, that's about five years ago, we actually didn't get rid of anyone. If anything, we'd, we, we massively increased the workforce because we started using these capabilities more effectively in mortgage processing, in fraud detection, in credit risk. And, uh, and when we started using it uh, more effectively, um, we started to find more benefits, both for the bank. As you know, these banks are quite profitable and their profits grow at a, at a very alarming pace. But AI can drive a lot of that for any business. So it's how you actually use it in a business and stop worrying about what the press actually says about taking away jobs and so on. Because really, in, in a lot of businesses we go to, you know, when we find proper applications of AI, and that's very few, we see quite an alarming result in their net profit. So, you know, the profit grows tremendously. When sales grow tremendously and your profits grow up, what do they do? They hire more people to manage your clients. So that has a rippling effect. So don't think of AI as something that is, com is going to come through and take away your jobs. Yes, it is going to take away all your menial tasks, you know, the tasks that we weren't supposed to do in the first place. For example, uh, I'll give you a really good example. Um, someone reading invoices coming in and, and today we have Salesforce and accounting systems and so many systems in a workforce, you know, one division, I, I went to this large company, they had 162 systems. I mean, how many screens does a human need to have just to open up so many applications? You know, they already had four on their desk. I said, you're probably going to have 16 by the time I come back. Um, so, you know, how do we take that invoice, extract the contents and enter it in a system where something like robotic process automation and AI can extract the values from the invoice, AI can then detect, is this invoice accurate or is the amounts correct? Is he a previous vendor in our system? And then go enter it into Salesforce and enter it into your CRS system and all of that can be automated. Now, for a person to do that, they're prone to error and it's a horrible menial task to open invoices that come in every day. And I can promise you, I ask this question, do you really love your job? And they hate it. Because all they do is look at an invoice, three other screens, and there they go, punch it in Salesforce. Punch it into an accounting system. Now, AI can do that. What they should be doing is looking at errors and fraud and looking at opportunities. Oh, this customer is actually buying more from us today. This is an amazing customer. 
maybe we should send the customer some benefits or you know, uh, you know, send a thank you card or offer exclusive deals for them. That's the kind of thing you need to be looking at. So as our jobs will pivot from those really menial tasks, you know, data entry, which we shouldn't have been doing in the first place, it'll pivot to more thought-provoking tasks as we go along. Now, actually, that might be the storm, actually. I, I did get caught in the hail before I, I got you. It did hail before I came in, so yeah. But, um, you know, when we look at these tasks, we need to look at how our jobs evolve and not doing the same thing over and over. And I think that's really, really important is how do we involve as individuals and how do we actually use these technologies? It's going to be really good. And I, I'll give you another example with AI. Um, we have accountants entering in records in your CRM. So these records they enter, uh, we ran an AI to detect for incorrect GL posting. So they get the invoices coming in, they enter it into the system, and you will be so alarmed when we ran this AI to detect for incorrect GL postings. Means if you post it incorrectly, you're gonna pay the incorrect GST. And that actually costed the firm millions of dollars each year of just data entry errors. And that's really bad. So we ran this AI, the, the, uh, the uh, data entry operator still entered it in, but the AI was telling them, hey, I think you posted this incorrect, you may wanna correct this that will have a reduction you know of millions of dollars for that firm with just incorrect data entry but it's assisting the operator so the way i see it today is and i'm going a bit off topic here just for a moment the way i see it today is we can use ai to augment the human capability not to replace them we can have more accurate data entry and we can use the ai to help them okay and i think that's really important you can't replace the human completely from the loop because, you know, when you read something, there is a level of judgment. So, uh, and, and I say to all my talks, the AI will augment human judgment, improve judgment. And when you improve judgment, you get accurate outcomes and it improves your value in the workforce. So, so, so think about it that way. It'll actually be better for business, for sales and benefit. Now, I'm going to talk about dot chain today, data of things chain and why dot chain. And this, this product actually came about because of the number of applications of AI where we're trying to apply in the workforce today. So we have applied AI in health. We used it at a very large hospital to detect high-risk cardiac patients that came to the emergency department. We used AI at hospitals to improve patient flow and surgery and theater optimization. So, that, you know, usually ton tonsillitis sometimes can take up to four years, which is a bit ridiculous in our health system today. So we try to optimize this the journey with AI and sort of predict, um, you know, can we put patients in faster and quicker and avoid all the lag time? And, and we started to use this in, you know, in business for auditing, for GST. We started to use it for business modeling. And the biggest problem we find in the industry is data. So 80% of our time is data cleansing, data preparation, which you need to do every day in order to you know feed your AI the right training sets and whether you use deep learning or you know using a non-linear regression algorithm for classification or regression you need good data now the problem we were coming over and over across is no one has a single source of truth data you go to a business and say you know where's your master data management tell me about your data and it exists in salesforce it exists in service now it exists in crm and financial systems lots of people are now creating this big data clouds and the data is in the cloud it's in the bucket but it's not formatted so they started to dump data in the cloud and that became the big data solution for a lot of companies and you know and, and you come across these problems all the time so what we decided to do is look at the blockchain technology and say, hey, if we can store data on a chain in blocks transaction wise, how valuable will that be for a business today? Okay, so if you look at Bitcoin today, worth over 160 billion euros and probably growing, I might have got that number wrong today, no bank, no branches, People are updating these transactions into blocks using a proof of work, work algorithm. And they're doing it quite effectively. Every 10 minutes, a new block is added to your chain. And it's quite amazing how 
Bitcoin can be worth over $160 billion. And we don't even know the guy that created it because everyone refers to him as AKA Satoshi Nakamura. And, and whether he's a company or an individual, we, we don't even know. And yet he has a business that's worth over, you know, 160, probably 180 billion euros. And over $4 billion have been paid to the miners that actually update these blocks to date. So we thought, okay, this is quite interesting because even the banks and everyone started to look because it's decentralized technology. You can store your information on a block and it's great for financial transactions because then you can transact and it's fairly safe and you can't hack it. I mean, the blockchain itself hasn't been hacked to date. Obviously, there's been registries that have been hacked because you're using the old model. It's not distributed. You put all your keys in one server. Of course, you're going to be hacked. Um, blockchain is more decentralized, stored in many nodes. So we asked ourselves, what's the value of this to a business today? And then th this is when we went in our labs and we actually built what we call the dot chain. So before I go into the dot chain product, the data of things, I want to talk about Bitcoin and blockchain today. So what is blockchain? Now, we need to understand that Bitcoin sits on top of blockchain. Now we call blockchain is the gold dust. That's the technology or the infrastructure that allows this Bitcoin transactions to be stored as transactions in blocks on a chain. The very first block that has been created is always called the Genesis block. And uh, that's the block you start off with. And then every block thereafter is then attached to the chain. And each block takes the hash of the previous block and it's literally given today's computing power that you can actually hack it because you've got to hack all the peers on the nodes at the same time and get the hash of the previous blocks and change all of the chains, which is computationally impossible at this point in time. Now, there are scientists out there that are currently working on algorithms um, to even avoid quantum computing to hack these blocks like Z stocks and, and so on. And these algorithms will eventually, after trial and testing, will be released and it'll become even more difficult to go and hack the blockchain when, uh, when quantum computing comes along. Now, what is the blockchain technology? It permits transactions to be gathered and recorded in blocks. These blocks are uh, cryptographically chain blocks in chronological order. As I showed you before, it takes the hash of the previous block and it's all cryptographically hashed. And it allows, it allows the resulting ledger to be accessed by different servers because we are distributing them as a peer-to-peer -peer network. How does data processing work? For example, you might go online and you might initiate a transaction. I would like to purchase something um, or I would like to send uh, Bob uh, five bitcoins. Bob will be very rich, rich if you look at the value of bitcoins today. And how do you do that? So users initiate the transactions through digital signature. You have your private signature and your public signature. Um, you can sign your transactions um, with your private signature and using the private signature, you can validate that that coins belong to you from your uh, wallet and you're going to transfer them to Bob. And then one or more nodes begin to start validating each transaction. The nodes will aggregate the validated transactions, meaning you are not the only one transacting at the same time. There's many people transacting. So these nodes will go out and aggregate all of these transactions every 10 minutes into blocks. And then using the consensus protocol proof of work, you've got to solve a mathematical puzzle to actually then um, say yes. And, and it's called the nounce the number of leading zeros in front. And this is then reflected uh, on the block as a chain state and you have the blockchain. So this is how a distributed ledger works today. Now, why is cryptology important on the blockchain? Why is these chaining of the blocks valid? So when we looked at it and, and, and looked at the benefits for business, you know, having that digital signature to say this is you and not a username and password, which you can crack. You know, um, you know, having that digital signature, both your private and public keys, when you sign it with your private key, and you've got to keep your private key safe, obviously. Um, this is why some of the registries got hacked. Lots of people st stored their private keys on the registry, and someone got in and got a copy of all those keys and started getting access to your coins. So in your wallet, if you sign um, your coins and you 
say, I want to transfer these five coins to Bob. It's signed with these public, uh, with this, uh, using cryptography and, and obviously uh, using a hashing algorithm. The proof of work then validates these transactions, meaning you've got to solve the mathematical puzzle and then uh, and there are alternative uh, alternate uh, proof of work algorithms out there as well and if both ethereum and blockchain uses the proof of work ethereum is going to migrate to a new type of uh, algorithm but that's been discussed at the moment and then once it validates it it looks for the double spend problem to make sure that that money is not spent twice i'm sending the coins to bob and i'm not sending the coins also to mary and others um, so that proof of work algorithm will then validate this and you solve the double spend problem and those transactions are hashed. Now, what's really important about this is, can we use this technology in our business today? And the answer to that is yes, because today, if you go to any business, you've got data in so many databases and so many systems and data sitting on a cloud. And unfortunately, you know, even when I talk to the financial uh, CFOs at firms, they can't rely on any single source except their own database, which they're comfortable with, you know, collecting transactions. But if the transactions are stored in a master database that's cryptographically hashed using proof of work algorithms to store it safely, you can literally come up with what we call, you know, a master data source that is unhackable, literally in your business. And I'll talk about that uh, in a moment. So, so looking at the, um, um, blockchain um, Bitcoin framework itself, someone requests a transaction and then this requested transaction is broadcasted to a peer-to-peer -peer network and that peer-to-peer -peer network validates the transaction, checks for the double spend problem and adds it to the chain. Now, this very same architecture can be used in a business because today not many businesses want to share their information on a decentralized chain, which is a public chain. But there are also blockchains that are private as well, like Hyperledger and Corda and so on. And private could be for your business internally or private amongst a group of companies. Maybe there might be three or four banks that want to issue a bank guarantee to these individuals. They want to validate it. So there's different forms of blockchain. So what we went and done is we created this product called DotChain, Dot Data of Things Chain as a private blockchain for business. What this specific product did, does is, it validates a single source of truth, meaning in your business, you can use this blockchain to get your data from source and store it as a single source of truth, which is validated, unhackable, and cryptographically hashed, and secure in your network. Now, I spoke to an auditor the other day at Deloitte and I said, imagine you can have all this data, you can rely upon it and you can actually sign to, before you release your notes to the stock exchange, that these are your transactions. Imagine having a database that's cryptographically hashed, that is absolutely secure, that you can rely upon and run an audit and tell you about the financial activities of the firm without the firm changing those transactions because that data will come from source. It's absolutely amazing. Um, you know, uh, use of time for an auditor, which manually does this, takes months to validate these transactions. So time saving there is phenomenal. Um, so, so some of the key features um, of this doc chain product is, you know, we've used cryptography, um, basically your public and private keys for each of the transactions for each consumer. We have it immutable, meaning you can use your proof of work algorithms to update this block. It's decentralized in your business. And I'm saying that specifically not in the web, but you can extend it to other companies. So it's a private blockchain. And it has the transparency meaning, uh, and, and I'll speak a little later about the transparency, how we actually replicate or what are the skills you need for dot chain today to create this database for businesses and how can you use it in a business today the biggest problem with um with any type of product or any new technology is you know if i'm storing patient records in this blockchain and i'm storing it securely and hashed and so on how can the individuals in a hospital or in a bank or in an insurance firm or any type of business use this data it's all cryptographically hash stored in the chain. So what we did is we went and 
built a replication to a database. So assume that this blockchain is a product in your business. I can replicate the data to any, uh, any database, Microsoft SQL Server, BigQuery, Postgres, or any type of database you have. And what you actually see here is, you notice that some transactions are hashed and some are not. You can actually hash all of the transactions. So what it does is the blockchain, you can store your data securely, replicate the data to a database, and use your normal methods to query the database. Um, you know, like you're in a producer report, or you might want to, obviously you need the keys to unlock the hash transaction. So based on a security model, you can get the keys. But then you can then train your algorithms. You know you've got a single source of truth. Just say, I want to predict customer churn in my business today. So you know your data is stored in a single source of truth. It's replicated to a database. And I'll write an AI algorithm. And this could be a random forest. I want to predict uh, customer churn in my business. Or you want to use deep learning to say, I think these customers, based on all of these characteristics, uh, will churn, might leave you and go to the competitor. And when you start understanding these insights with data that is from a single source of truth that is unaltered, you can get really good uh, results. And this is what led us to actually build the dot chain to store records securely so I can run my AI, I can run reports and so on in a very secure manner and be comfortable. Because if you go to any business today, if you ask marketing to run a report, they've got a completely different view versus financial in a different area. And we're trying to bridge this gap of having a master data management, having data governance and a single source of truth so you can run your AIs against it. So with this, you know, we, we found, we're starting to see some benefits. We're starting to apply dot chain now in the medical industry to secure patient records in a hospital uh, quite securely. Uh, we're noticing that the immutability that once you store it on the chain and you cannot change it is becoming quite a key feature and it's hashed. It's very transparent now because all your records are stored on the chain and it's secure. And obviously, we're now trying to expose APIs from this product as well, so you can actually query the data with the right level of security. So, so think of this as, you know, having the right level of security. You know, uh, I think in NASA and other places they have level ten clearance and level three clearance and so on. Based on your level of security, you can start seeing the data um, in the database and it's a very secure manner. I'm going to talk a little bit about the architecture. I'm not going to take too much of time. I think your pizza must have arrived by now. But um, in this architecture, um, so what we've done is, this is the blown up architecture of the chain. Um, so we built the first block, which is your Genesis block, as I explained. And then we've taken the hash of the previous block and so on, and we have created the chain. Now, what's really interesting in this entire architecture is we're getting data from on-premise data centers being replicated to the chain, whether it's your financial system, could be Salesforce, could be ServiceNow. This data has been replicated. Now, you notice something of all the technologies in there, I found Merkle root, and it's it's a good idea for you to, to Google Merkle root because that's a technology on its own that's quite fascinating, and I'll tell you why. Merkle root can validate the information. Just assume you're replicating your data from your blockchain to your database, and then someone goes and changes something in your database and alters your record. Now you you can actually use Merkle root to validate the consistency of records in a tree-like manner, and you can do it really quick. I, I could, uh, you know, validate petabytes of information very quickly, and we call that a quick validation of data to ensure that the data replicated from your chain to your database is accurate and secure. It's a fascinating technology. It's probably a whole lesson on its own, but I really encourage you to, to look at it. You can actually apply that technology in just data validation alone, and we're starting to extrapolate this as a product and validate data. You imagine you can keep continuously validate new data sources from one system to the other using a Merkle root. What it does is it takes the hash of the transaction uh, or the value and hashes it. And that hash, uh, you know, you cannot change it and you cannot reverse it. So you can just use that hash in a Merkle tree to validate your data. And it's a fabulous way actually to validate data as well. And as soon as someone changes the data, um, obviously you have your previous hash 
you hash the value again and you notice the hash does mate. Um, so that's basically Merkel root. So it's a fantastic way to validate it and it's a whole product on its own. If you guys are very keen to create your own products and sell to companies, you might make a lot of money there. Now, um, with the um, dot chain architecture as well, so if this is your chain, we can validate it to any store. We use Google BigQuery, um, which is a great database. It uh, expands computationally. You can put petabytes of information and it works quite effectively. So we've been uh, replicating the chain to a BigQuery and then you can run all your reports and your AI and your AI builds <coughs> of BigQuery itself and it's, and it's quite amazing. And uh, I'm, I'm not gonna take, I'm just gonna quickly just talk about this uh, before I go on to the last slide, is when you're applying AI or blockchain to any of your work, think of your work as an input and, a, and as an output, as a workflow. So when you go into a business today, before you go and try to solve any problem, look at the holistic picture of what does this person do in your job today? They might be reading an invoice from your email into the CRM systems. So look at it as an entire process and break those down into tasks. When you start understanding tasks in a business, you can better apply technologies to each task. And AIs get applied to task and, and not the actual jobs itself. So, so understand your workflow in a business before you go and apply any technology. So I really went through that slide really quick. And on the final slide, um, we're starting to use this dot chain product um, now for immutability, for security, for data governance, for data quality, for single source of truth. So it's starting to prove to be an important technology. It's still fairly new in the market. We only l launched it a few weeks ago and we ran a few trials, but we're gonna start to push this out uh, uh, with businesses. Thank you very much. Uh, I can be, uh, uh, sorry, contacted on LinkedIn. Um, I'm quite an uh, active user of LinkedIn, so feel free to message me and ask me any questions.